the next questioner, who is Mrs. D. Charlesworth. Welcome to the program, Mrs. Charlesworth. Would you like to have a seat? Right here. Mm -hmm. And now, may we have your question, please? Does it seem think it fair that under the new parking system, the same charge should be made for a small yes. bubble car? As for a large American sedan. Does the team think that it's fair under the new parking system that the same charge should be made for a small bubble car as for a large American sedan? The solution that I would have would be to give a bonus to the use to the users of small bubble cars, because I think they deserve one, and convert the large ones into small apartments. Have you got a bubble car, Mrs. Charlesworth? No, nothing. Why not? Got a bubble pipe? <laughs> you no motor Too vehicle expensive. at all. Well, I can't understand why you're interested in this problem. <laughs> surely, the answer is, surely the answer is that uh, uh, a bubble car doesn't pay uh, parking, it pays entertainment tax, doesn't it? <laughs> but when it yeah, comes... But there's, a simple, there's a simple answer, there's, if you'll forgive me one moment, there's a simple answer to the whole parking problem throughout the whole country, never mind about bubble cars in Canada. There's a simple answer, and that is this, that only cars that have been fully paid for should be allowed on the roads at all. <laughs> that answers the problem overnight. I, I think the same thing should apply to wives. The thing is that if there's a space on one meter, uh, you can't expect them, if there's two of you come along and get into the same space, so that's two bubble cars, I suppose that would be all right. You're only occupying one reserved space. So you've got to go around only with a friend who has another bubble car. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go on that 17,000 mile tour of yours across the Sahara again, Tommy. It couldn't be duller than that last speech. <laughs> no, I, what I'm trying to do, explain to the lady is that you've got a space, and if one little car... You've got a space, but some of us haven't. It's like... It's, What's that underneath your nose? That's a wide open space. Larry, I think I'm afraid that parking will have to apply to the same rule as governs democracy. One man, one vote, one car, one fee. So far as meters are concerned. That is perfectly true, but have any of the members of the team got any ideas of their own on solving the problem of yes, parking. Yes, I, I would like to see cars abolished completely from all congested business districts for parking purposes. This has already been done in Chicago, and for the greater part of Manhattan and New York, you can't park in the main streets of these cities at all. Well, I now, think that's rubbish. Let everybody park where they like, first come, first served, and let's have chaos. <laughs> <laughs> I've tried the other way, it doesn't work, so now try my way. <laughs> and I think you're right, you're right in saying it's rubbish, because the last time I was in New York, you couldn't park because of rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> that Jim wasn't rubbish, that was the politics. Now you tell me. <laughs> All right, now you three have had a good go. Jimmy has been stroking that moustache of his thinking, I hope. No, I've just been enjoying stroking my moustache. <laughs> <laughs> have you any light to throw on the subject, Jimmy? That's not light, that's static from the moustache. You see, we all make these damn fool generalizations. You can't sit here and say, as Mr. Michael I said, the answer is... There's no answer to the parking problem in this country. Either you have people applying for green and yellow and red tickets. If you have a real reason for parking outside a certain spot, you'll be allowed to come into the zone with a green ticket. And then if you haven't, you have to be kept out of the zone. Either you have that complicated system, or you have what Larry says, no party at all. We'll just come to that. It was interesting to me to see that our audience was in favor of undisciplined chaos. When Tommy talked about it, it got a big hand. Well, that's what they're getting on this program. Mrs. Charlesworth, have you any uh, solution for the solving of the parking problem? No, no, no. Have you any uh, thoughts on the matter of this, this, the charges made for bubble cars and large cars? You must have some views on it, otherwise you wouldn't put the question. You don't know anything about them. <laughs> You need to say, Mr. Charles, you've just come here to pick the team's brains. Well, You're going to find mighty slim pickings. <laughs> well, I would come at harvest time. <laughs> a little bit early at the moment. Well, I would suggest, uh, Mrs. Charles, if that's what you have come here for, you haven't really succeeded in having a full meal of the pickings. They have told you, rather, what they think of the possibilities of solving the parking problem. Wrap it problem. up, Mac Hobley, wrap it up. Utter chaos. Yeah. Yeah. You'll wrap it up, it. Oh, We've enjoyed having you on the program. Thank you very much, Mrs. Charlesworth. Thank you. Ah.